Hey, welcome to an introduction for our class called Web Application Security. And so this is an overview of what we're going to learn. In Web Application Security, we're going to work on three different sections of the class. First of all, we're going to build an application called the Jokes app. We're going to learn how to use PHP and MySQL, and we'll skip no steps. This will be an introduction to building a very basic web app. It will be unsecure, and so we'll have security problems that we can fix later. In part two, we're going to add some user login uh, features. So the user can register a new account and then log in. Those passwords will be saved in the database. That will require some extra programming, obviously. Then in the third part of the course, we're going to explore some security features. We're going to hack the website and then make it more secure. So in detail, this is what the uh, first part will look like. The Jokes app. I'll teach you how to set up a web server, how to connect it with a database server, then how to do some keyword searches against the database. We'll create some forms that we can add data to. And then we'll finish up the course using some CSS formatting to make the application look very professional. In part two of the class, we're going to create a multi-table database, which means we're going to have a user's table in addition to the jokes table. So the uh, parts that we're going to explore in detail are to add the MySQL Workbench tool. MySQL Workbench is essential if you're going to be able to add a second table and then join them using a foreign key. And so this will be a complete demonstration, assuming you know nothing about how to use these tools. Once we have the database with a second uh, table in it, with a user's table, then the users can register and log in and save their information in our application. Once we have a user associated with the jokes, then each joke gets to be printed next to the owner's name, which will require some use of joining, and that's a SQL technique for combining tables in one query. And in part three, we're going to work with some security issues. So we'll, we'll explore the difference between what get and post methods look like. We'll do SQL injection attacks, and you'll actually see the data from our users table displayed on the screen with everyone's password. And so that will be an obvious call to some security upgrades. Then we'll do some um, password requirements. We'll force the users to use long passwords with some special characters using a tool called regex. Then we'll do a password hashing, which is a way of encrypting our passwords. So even if a hacker were able to get all of the names and usernames and passwords for our account, they would still not be able to use the password. And then finally, we'll work on cross-site scripting with JavaScript, which is a common tool for stealing people's authentication. A good source of authority for understanding web application vulnerabilities is the organization called OWASP. And they publish a report every few years about the 10 most critical web application security lists. So let's see how our lessons stack up to this list. So let's come down to the list here. So we've got ourselves the 2013 list compared to the 2017 list. Right at the top of both lists is the idea of SQL injection. And so we are going to be focusing on that heavily in the security section. And the second they call broken authentication. It's about having passwords that are too weak or very easily guessed. And so we'll see if we can fix that. Uh, part number three is sensitive data exposure. And so the only sensitive data in our application is the user's names and passwords, which we will make less sensitive by encrypting them using a hashing algorithm. And then further down the page, we can see cross-site scripting, which will be part of our uh, system here as well. And cross-site scripting is a JavaScript uh, strategy to steal cookies from a user's session. So we'll fix uh, many of the issues that are in the list here uh, based on OWASP's uh, recommendations.